welcome to this video, top stitches looking bad. Oh, and what to look for and how to fix them. And we're gonna talk about eyelashing, railroad tracks, and bearding look like on the top of your fabric. We'll jump in and we'll learn how to fix those problems and what they look like so that you can fix the problems. This is called eyelashing, where you have long stitches that look like those beautiful fake eyelashes. Man, if you have the real ones, I'm envious. But anyway, that's called eyelashing. And if you're getting that on the top, it's a few different things that we need to check to fix. Number one, check your bobbin case. That's probably the most defining factor of what's happening with this um, stitch and why it's so loose. And you'll notice that as I'm checking it, oh, I'm pulling on my threads. Number one, it's in backwards. It's going counterclockwise rather than clockwise. And number two, as I pull on the threads, it's not even coming up out of my hands. So there's no tension on it whatsoever. And how to make the adjustments? Let's put it in the right way, number one. And then we can tighten up our tension screw. Well, you have a nifty little tool here that you can use. And I like to use my foot height gauge to adjust rather than my fingernail. If you had your fingernails nicely done, you don't want to ruin them. So let's use our, our little foot height gauge. Notice it has four corners on it that will work well as a little flathead screwdriver that fits in to this nice and nifty, the screw. And remember the rule of thumb, it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. So I want to face it towards me, okay? I'm going to have my left hand, my right hand. If you remember that rule, lefty loosey, righty tighty, then you'll know which way to turn the screw to get the tension correct. This is also a tension screw on your bobbin case and it is really important for you to adjust with the different types of threads that you're using. Some are a little thicker, some are a little finer. So adjust the screw and go, oh, don't be worried about doing it. All right, so I'm going to turn it towards the right. So I'm going to make it tighter and you know what, it's really, really loose. So I'm going to do it quite a bit and to the point where I'm hoping I'm going to start getting tension here. And I am because now rather than it sitting flat in my hand and starting to pull up and it's at least pulled it to the standing position, but I'm not getting enough tension on it. So I'm going to slightly now do it in increments, small little increments to get that correct tension. And I'm going to test still a little loose to me and I'm going to tighten it up a little more and keep doing it. That still feels loose, but I'm getting more and more tension. I feel like we are better tension gauges than some of the TOA gauges, but do what works well for you. Okay. Oh, that's even better. I, I like that tension there. It, it doesn't come up out of my hand, but I could do it so it slightly does, but I feel a little bit of tug. So I could just tighten it just a little bit more and that feels really good. I'm gonna cut that off, put it back in, and we'll pull up our threads and make our adjustments. So now we're just gonna check our tension again. Oh, see how much nicer that looks? Yeah, it's still pulling up just a little bit, but you can work with that and make our adjustments. So we can have it be just right. But it's a good place to start. So start with you. If you're having problems on top, then check your bobbin case and see if maybe you've just changed the bobbin. Uh, a thread's gotten caught between the arm. Um, there could be lots of little factors, maybe too full. And when the bobbin's too full, that can cause tension problems. So if you're having problems on top, start with the bobbin case. Next thing I want to talk to you about um, 
you know, we've talked about eyelashing, but also kind of goes hand in hand is railroad tracks. And you know what railroad tracks look like? They're a piece that has cross braces all the way across. So you look like railroad tracks. So when you see a stitch that's just lean, just kind of like it's on top of the fabric, but it has little, the little knots, you can see the little knot in increments just sitting right there on top and the thread's just laying there. It's like it's not even pulling in between the layers. That's railroad tracking. Um, and that's what it looks like. It's just the beginning of the eyelashing. The eye, railroad tracks are usually found on the straight, either vertical or horizontal. And the eyelashing is what you see when you're curving, going into the curves, because it's pulling the thread, this thread that's laying on top away, and those underneath threads are pulling up through to make those ugly eyelashes. So those are the differences or the similarities between eyelashing and a railroad tracks. And now that you understand what it looks like on top, the same thing applies for underneath. That's how they're created, but how you fix them is a little different. All right, let's talk about bearding. Okay, no woman wants to be seen with bearding, okay? It's just awful on us, but guys look pretty good. Anyway, bearding isn't you growing a beard, it's little tufts of batting coming through. I know we've seen them on clothing. They're like little lint pieces that come up through the layers and you can get them on the top or the bottom. That's a problem with your batting. Number one, you have it on the wrong direction where the scrim side is up rather than down towards the backing. And that's really important for you to understand how the batting's made. Make sure that when you cut your batting and you're laying it on your fabric that the scrim side faces down towards the backing. It, the scrim really actually um, is kind of that safety net to um, hide that bearding and keep it in between the layers. And the fuzzy side is now up. So watch your batting, learn how to use it correctly and put it on your quilt and you won't have the little bearding problems that um, afflict many quilts. Now, the next thing we need to understand that can cause bearding problems is our needle size. Um, it can have a little burr on it and it can catch on the batting and it can pull those little tufts of batting up through and cause bearding. You know, watch your needle, make sure it doesn't have any burrs and make sure you change it often and it's nice and sharp. So watch the batting where the scrim site is and your needle and boy, we're good to go. Thanks for joining me on this video, what the top stitches look like. Join me on what the bottom stitches look like and what we need to look for and how we need to fix it.